Welcome back to the Jeep Jamboree video series. I'm here with Dennis Wood of TerraFlex Suspension Systems. Now, Dennis, we get a lot of questions in our office about this huge confusion over lift kits. I mean, there's there's long arm, short arm, puck, spacer. What what are the difference, and how does somebody go about choosing the right lift kit for themselves? That's a big question. But to just back it all back, probably the the best thing you need to do is you got to ask yourself. How big of a tire am I going to run? Well, it's true because you can't put the size tire yeah. on a stock Jeep yeah. without a lift kit. So how big of a tire are you going to run? The next one's going to be, what do I plan on doing with the Jeep? Am I going to use it as a, a daily driver most of the time? Or is it going to be a, you know, a, just a weekend warrior? Or am I going to go out there and just trail run it? So what am I going to use it for? What, how big of a tire? And then you probably want to uh, think about the relationship you have with your wife and if you'd like to maintain that. <laughs> That's true, because lift kits are not cheap, particularly good lift kits, good quality lift kits, cost a little bit of money, but are worthwhile putting on. I know we had a few, we have a few samples here. This is, one of the questions we get at the office is the difference between a long arm and a short arm. Obviously, one is longer than the other, mm -hmm. but what does that do? What does that do for, for somebody who puts one on? It, it's kind of an interesting concept, because when we do a, a control arm is, is pretty much level with the ground to start with. And then when, if this is the Jeep and that's the axle, as we lift it up, you see that that angle just changes. Well, that does a couple of things. It'll make it so that when you hit a bump, the, the shock load gets transferred up there. Um, and then the control of the axle is a little bit different. But if you do that same lift and put a long arm on it, now when you have that movement, that, that shock load isn't transferred to the Jeep. So you can actually get a, a nicer ride out of a long arm. Okay. But you kind of need to look at it and decide how big of a lift you're going, because it can also be counterproductive because of clearance. Okay. And people also, there's a, people say a puck lift or a spacer lift is something like this. And that just gets, what, installed above or below the, 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 the spring? Yeah, exactly. So there's your coil spring. It's going to just sit right on top of the spring. You usually you use your stock springs, and that just shims it up that okay. much. Well, we're going to go take a look at these now. Uh, Dennis, there's a lot of terminology and verbiage that people don't understand. Drag link, track bar. What do all those mean? That gets to be quite the vocabulary you have to develop. But let's just take a quick look at some of the components on the front end of this Jeep. We'll look at some of the steering parts. Uh, start out with the tie rod end. The tie rod actually goes between the wheels, so it joins both tires together. Uh, next to that is your sway bar. Now your sway bar, its job in life is to keep that Jeep from rocking back and forth when you're taking a turn on the freeway or whatever, so that's a stabilizing one. And then the sway bar link is a small link that ties the sway bar to the axle. We've got that. And then the next one up here we'll look at is the drag link. The drag link actually comes from the steering gear. There's a pitman arm in there as well. <laughs> it goes from the steering gear over to that steering knuckle, so it actually drags that wheel back and forth and gives you the steering, what they call it a drag link. Right behind that is the, is the uh, track bar. Now that track bar can also be called a pan hard, but track bar is the most common term for it. And its job is to keep that axle stable under the Jeep whenever we're steering, uh, it loads it back and forth. So that's what the track bar does. Okay, that's pretty much all the steering components. Let's just turn the wheel here quick and we'll take a look at the control arms. Control arms are under here. You've got an upper and a lower control arm. And there's going to be four of those on each axle. With steering and your control arms, that's pretty much all the pieces. Well, aside from springs and shocks that we're looking at on a, <laughs> on a lift. Now, all these different components, Dennis, you talk about, I mean, there's a lot of new terminology there for people. I assume yeah. that you can find all of this in the Webster Dictionary. <laughs> people, can look, yeah. people can look them up. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, you know, this is a stock vehicle we're looking at here. Yours, obviously, a little more modified. I come into you with a stock vehicle like this. I say, Dennis, give me top three tips. What are the top three recommendations you'd make to me if I want to go bigger, kind of like your vehicle? Where do I go from there? Well, we've, we've looked at the, the three things. What, how big of a tire? So that'll tell us how big the lift's going to be. And based on how big a lift is, you're going to need to change out some of these other steering components. Because if you're starting to go to a 38-inch tire, then you're probably going to want to look at a, at a different sway bar because the, the vehicle's going to be up higher. You're going to get more sway on the road. You're probably going to need to increase the size of that. Same with the tie rod ends. 
uh, bigger tires, you get bound up on the trail, it'll bend that stock tri or tie rod in. So you're going to need to change a few components. So not just people thinking about lift kits only, you have to kind of think about the so next few the steps whole... beyond that, yeah, correct? Yeah, and that's, that's so Even true. Even drive line angles exactly. sometimes need to be adjusted. You, you do a two and a half inch and a three inch kit, that's, that's not a big deal. You know, you can, you can do that without changing a lot of things. It, drive lines is a big one. That's an expensive upgrade. So if you want to stay reasonable and still be capable, 35 inch tire, two and a half, three inch lift. You don't have to change the drive lines. A lot of the steering stays the same. You, you can get away with your gearing, you know, your gearing can stay. That's right. So, so when you look at that lift kit price online, it's just not the lift oh, kit. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's a second tier you really need to look at for that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming by today. I really appreciate taking the time. And uh, if you need more information, you can go to terraflex.com and learn more information there.